As the restaurant scene in Detroit continues to boom, it presents a unique challenge to black-owned restaurants and African-American chefs. They're faced with finding new ways to brand their businesses. Location, atmosphere, customer service, marketing, and dietary concerns all come into consideration when trying to build a steady customer base. Additionally, soul food is no longer only a staple at black restaurants. It is showing up on menus in many white-owned eateries. Joining me now are two local chefs, Maxell Hardy, owner of River Bistro and Coop Detroit, and Phil Jones of Maharu. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks, Alice. Yeah. So I, I think this is a really fascinating dynamic that we're seeing unfold with uh, a, a city that's as heavily African-American as Detroit, sort of with this resurgence and it, that resurgence focusing on food yep. and then what role African-American chefs and restaurants play uh, in that in that rebirth. It is not a simple picture. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how you've seen it the last, I guess, century, quarter century, how it has, like, you know, changed um, in, in, in our dynamic as chefs and in the restaurant industry before. As a chef, for me, um, coming in as a young, you know, chef in Miami, trying to really make my mark and seeing so many other white chefs and non-African-American chefs, you know, put a staple on soul food and Caribbean food is, you know, it's like, how do you, you know, how do you get the right to do that? You know, I'm not saying, you know, you don't know, you know, but, um, you know, you don't have to But it puts soul. you in a, in a weird space, Yeah, right? no, it's like, well, should I be doing other things outside of soul food and, you know, should Caribbean? You making you know? German right, food? Right, or? Right, right, Italian, like, you know, what, right. you know, what should I be doing? And so um, I think you find a lot of chefs in, in that mixed space as African-American trying to figure out, you know, well, I thought this is my landscape. I thought this is what I should be doing. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you know so. there are always assumptions that black chefs cook soul food, right. and while a lot do, it's not the only place that we come from. Right. And I'm actually a culinary mutt. Um, I'm I <laughs> don't I don't claim soul food. Yeah. I don't, I don't claim to cook it. I don't claim to know it. I'm soul food influenced. My grandmother came from the red dirt of, of Georgia, mm -hmm. but I've I, I visited the South. I'm not from the South. I'm from the North. I lived on the East Coast. I live here in the Midwest. I'm from the islands. I'm from a lot of places, but not the South. And I get pegged. Oh, you must cook really good soul food. <laughs> no, because not you're at all. Right? Yeah, not at all. I, I I pay tribute to soul food, but you know, I I find that we can appropriate inside of our own cultures, yeah, yeah. and I refuse to do that. Huh. Huh. So, so how do you how do you sort of split that that tension and and figure out what it is you want to do yep. and what customers want from you? Well, for me, you know, you know, kind of piggybacking what Chef said, you know, I never wanted to be played as a soul food chef. Yeah. Right. That's just what I didn't want to do it. I, you know, I shied away from doing soul food for so long, just because I couldn't get the dollar in catering as a private chef that I would if I was doing the other cuisine. Right. Uh -huh. So I was like, once you known as a soul food chef and you know, you only can charge up to $15 per person, right? Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you start doing other cuisines, now you're getting $30, $40 a person. Is that right? And so it's, um, I think people and just. And that difference is, is just. Uh, just, the, just the name of the cuisine, yeah. right? If I say I'm doing soul food or southern, you know, cuisine, and versus I said I'm going to do a fusion of, you know, Asian and Caribbean, it's like, oh, wow, that seems a little more intriguing, yeah. right? Um, but. I'm using more intriguing ingredients doing soul food than I am, you know, that I'm doing any other cuisine. So um, it's just a it's, it's a mix, you know, just how we how we perceive you know, soul food to be. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I I sit back and, and I listen to Chef, and we're always defined by what we do and how we do it. Uh -huh. And soul food has been relegated to the lower levels because it's, it's considered to be slave food, food of, of, right. of in, enslaved folks. And we forget that it actually took a lot of technique to make food, right. soul food, right. taste good. Sure, right. you, you actually have to know a bunch of different techniques and black folks are actually culinary griots. Yeah. We maintain the knowledge base for a lot of different cultures mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of different cultures within inside of our world. And so we watch us being pegged as one thing. You know, Africa is a bunch of countries. <laughs> you, you're an African. Well, you don't say you're a European, you're an Italian, you're German, you're French. Right. And we get pigeonholed into these things and it's a battle. I know you see it. And I always think of like, if you pay the doctor per hour, right, you pay him $300 an hour. Well, if you pay the chef $10 an hour, 
But he has. It, take, it takes hours to make that red gravy. It <laughs> right. takes hours to make a you know right. to make a proper root to make a demi to turn into some of these things that we know. It takes hours to make green. So if we put a time limit on it and uh -huh. an hourly wage on uh -huh. it, we should be making just as much as a doctor. As you know, <laughs> in certain in certain you know recipes and. Um, and you think of you think of soul food. Some of those ingredients, man, they're indigenous to us as people, right? Um, to the to the places we come from. Yeah. Um, and it's not hard to find. It's hard to find some of those ingredients, right? And and really do it right. Yeah. You know, you think of people say collard greens. I was reading, you know, kind of a, a post on the collard greens that um, Neiman Marcus was selling or something <laughs> like that, right? And they use bacon. Like, well, that wasn't. No, you know, that's, that's not what that goes not, in it, that? That's not it. You yeah. know, so. Um, how do we get to that, right? right. And, and how do we get back to, you know, just our roots as chefs? And yeah. so for me, um, now I do do some soul food and Caribbean mix, right? Because now I feel like I should really, I shouldn't shy away from it anymore. It's just, you know, really do it. Yeah. And do it at a price point and, and, and that people can understand and, and um, love and the quality of food that I put out should be, should be from the soul, yeah. right? And whether it's whatever region, whatever cuisine you're gonna do, it should be from your soul. Yeah. And I think that's what soul food really means to me, um, cooking from the soul and cooking from some of those, you know, parvish moments and some of those, you know, ancestry moments where we can really get back to our roots, you know, and I think that's where, I think the way of culinary is moving anyway, right? Um, getting back to some of those stews and um, low country cooking mm -hmm. and, um, and whether it's soul food or whether it's, you know, Italian cuisine, I think, a lot of chefs are getting back to some of those roots, which is, mm. I think, is important for us. You know, what, what, what about opportunities for chefs like yourselves in the new "quote unquote" Detroit? I mean, I, I don't love that phrase, uh, but I think it, it does sort of capture that there's a different dynamic right now yep. than there has been. Uh, is it easier? Is it harder? Or is it just different? It's it's, 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 it's um. It's just as bad as it's always been. Yeah. And, you know, I've got Chef Max right here. I say to folks all the time that there are more black chefs than Chef, Chef Max. Mm -hmm. And I applaud what this brother's doing. I support what he's doing. But we don't get the recognition. We don't get the financing. We don't get the dollars. And we've been here taking care of this city when no one else did. Mm -hmm. there are, there's this resurgence of food in Detroit, but there are no more black chefs than there were. Huh. There are no more black restaurants than there were. We've always been here. Why is it all of a sudden something new and exciting and wonderful? There's food in Detroit. <laughs> there always still, was food. You know, there, you, right? they talk about obesity in Detroit. If we're so obese, you know, where's the, where are the restaurants that are feeding these folks? <laughs> right. And, you know, and just going back to the dollar, we can't get money for soul food or black food, but a chicken breast costs me just as much as person X or anyone, right? anyone else. Our food costs are exactly the same. We don't get a bump down because it's black food. Right. And so why are, are they allowed are to make people, money yeah. and we're not? Yeah. It's a hard road. Yeah. So for me, I mean, you know, coming back to Detroit from New York and, and mm -hmm. really wanting to be a part of this whole food synergy, my, my thing was like use my platform that I've been able to use as a chef to to showcase some of those African-American chefs that were already here, mm -hmm. right? You let me come into the city, you're gonna give me a platform because you think uh, it's cool because I'm back from New York yeah. and the whole buzz and, like, that's fine and great, but let me use that platform to open up doors for other chefs that was already here right. to give them the shine and, and the light. So, um, for me, I, you know, I brought in some really cool, talented chefs that was locally chefs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm helping training some students from Detroit yeah. um, to put back into you know the industry or put into the industry and give them a light, mm -hmm. right? And just use my platform um, to give them the next step up because it wasn't like Chef say we're always, they always been here, you know, but it wasn't opportunities that that were necessarily presented to them on that scale. So now that it being opportunity, you know, given to me, let me use that to let them shine as well, right? Versus you know me taking a shine. Let me and let is them it, shine. do you find it uh, easy to find reception for that? Like uh, the idea that you want to bring other people through the door with you? Yeah, I mean you know it's Detroit's always been you know kind of a meat and potatoes town, mm -hmm. and it hasn't been like you know yes yeah, Sheffield mm -hmm. and some of the other you know legendary chefs that's been here yeah. has had some great opportunities, but. You know, it wasn't something where you go in to see these five-star James Beard award-winning chefs right. and all this stuff. You, you know, you really didn't have that. So now that you have that, I think the, the light is being shined on so many restaurants and opportunities in the city. So I think 
now students are starting to open up and get those yeah. opportunities and, get and, and, and really step in, in place and, and make it happen. But yeah, um, yeah it's, it's just one of those things like where we have to really grab it and, and go yeah. with it. Yeah. And we all got to stick together and make it work. Right. You know, like right. that's that's the key. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. we can get all these opportunities, but if we can't, you know, monetize it and work together to make it happen, then you know, it yeah. just goes out the door. Right. Uh, we're we're out of time, but okay. uh, I want to thank you both for being here and uh, exactly. wish you luck in that new that new space. <laughs> right. right? right. That's Same our thing. program. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's our program for today.